All right, so look, obviously I could come on here and I can regurgitate the same information you've probably heard about building teams and show you the same Google document that's been floating around. Thanks to some of the guys in the official World Flipper Discord. I will have that linked in the description and in a pinned comment below instead. What I'm gonna do, guys, because we can't do this every single time a new unit comes out, what I'm gonna do is actually try to talk you guys through how to think about creating a team, how to actually be on the right path to making efficient teams regardless of what units you want to use and understanding what you actually need to think about when making teams in World Flipper. That's what this video is designed to do for you, is to help you actually think for yourself and understand how to be creative and try to formulate teams on your own that could possibly work and maybe some teams that people haven't even put guides out for. So hopefully that's what this video accomplishes. Give me a thumbs up if you are here for that type of content. But one thing I do want you guys to kind of, you know, think about while you listen to this video. Some of the units I'm going to use are not necessarily the best units on my account. They are the best units that work best within a certain element. Whatever element you are building your account for is going to greatly affect the units that you choose to put on your various teams. Keep in mind, you can literally create multiple teams and save those teams and have them ready for different game modes, whether that be specific elemental dungeons or specific elemental boss battles, you will need different types of formations. All right, so just keep that in mind because you may be asking yourself, why isn't he using result in his main squad and instead use them as a subunit? Just keep watching and it'll make sense. And then just think about the overall account buff that I'm going to receive from the units that are going to be giving me buffs on that particular squad and think about which units you actually want receiving active buffs meaning if i'm getting wind buffs it doesn't make sense to have light element units in my main squad because they won't be using those wind buffs upon just regularly attacking the enemy right think about that but let's get into the video all right guys so obviously we're all dealing with the after effects of the global reroll being changed in a significant way it's just a lot longer than it was on other servers now instead of actually being able to delete your guest account you have to either uninstall and reinstall the game or you have to log out and use a completely different login method but in order to best cope with this change i feel that it's important that we all understand how to actually build our teams on world flipper so that's what we're going to talk about today is a team building guide and how to make the best of the units that you pull regardless of who you pull so for the purpose of this video i'm going to start with a fresh account or a fresh team i should say and we're going to go ahead and go to edit so we're going to start editing this team and i'm going to kind of talk you through why i'm editing it the way i'm editing it so the first thing you want to look for is figure out who your healer is. Healing is something that you're going to need, especially early on in the game before you get a bunch of the OP units and you can't one-shot anything. You're fighting bosses. You're going to need units that can heal. The healer is a good starting point to figure out how to build the rest of your squad. Depending on what healer you have is going to dictate how you're going to build the rest of your team. So if I'm looking through my units, then I can see here that the healer that I have that's the highest grade, that's my most potent healer, is going to be Furia. So if I look at Furia and I make her my leader unit just for right now, we don't know if she's going to remain the leader unit just yet. But we're going to go ahead and look at Furia's skill kit. And we can see that her skill has a heart on it, which is going to let you know off rip. It's a recovery skill. So, Sylphuria Breeze receives the blessing of the wind, restoring the HP of all parties. Effect boosted for wind units. Grants levitate to all allies. Levitate is the float mechanic. Levitate means that you're going to be able to extend your combo a lot better. And it's just a really cheesy mechanic. And it's part of the reason the wind team is so busted. But... The important thing here is we realize that she gives boosted effects to wind units, guys, and she's going to provide some healing. And if we look at her abilities, plus 9% HP buff to wind units. While levitate, plus 18% attack buff to wind units. When set as your main unit, wind units HP goes below 60% equals a once heal of 15% of other units HP. So her whole kit is designed off of feeding into wind units. That means that I want the rest of my squad 
to be wind element units. So that's going to give me a good starting point as to understand how I want to build the rest of this squad out. So I'm going to come here to my sort option. I'm going to filter just wind element units. And then I can see what I have to work with from here, right? So I have another five star wind element unit. And if I look at Leon here real quick, we can see his skill set. We can look at his abilities and see if it's something that's actually going to complement what Furia is doing. Are his abilities going to make him more potent in the levitate phase? Does he have anything to buff the levitate mechanic? Does he have anything that's going to complement what Furia already does? Let's take a look. His skill, Winds of Fortune, stirs up a tornado inflicting wind damage on foes in front, increases the attack of all parties. So right there, I have an attack increase for everyone off of Leon's skill. His leader skill is Fight Another Day, plus 30% attack buff for wind units, plus 30% power flip damage. Now, I have two different types of leader skills. One is geared towards specifically wind units receiving a plus 80% attack buff from Furious leader skill, and Leon's leader skill gives wind units a plus 30% attack buff. So right there, I'm getting a better bonus from Furious leader skill. So that lets me know that Fury is more likely to be my leader right now than Leon would be. So we're going to keep that in mind as we're building this team. Then he also has a plus 30% power flip damage. See right there, that's two mechanics that I have to choose between do I want to capitalize on? Do I want to build a power flip team or do I want to build a team that's going to capitalize off the levitate mechanic? Now the rest of his abilities takes damage in place of unit in slot three plus 25% thunder resistance and HP plus 75%. A 30 combo is performed equals plus 5% power flip damage. When set as your main unit times three takes damage, you get a plus 10% attack buff, meaning you get more attack the more he takes damage if he set as your main unit. We're still probably going to end up just temporarily slotting him in and we're going to have him occupy this slot. We're not going to put him in slot three because remember one of his abilities is actually going to protect whoever's in slot three. So technically, if I wanted to, I could actually have Furia take slot three because that means that I would then have someone taking damage in place of my healer, right? You see how the team building got kind of starting to take place here, right? So let's look at the rest of my units. We also have a couple of more four star win units here. And let's look and see who actually fit this squad the best. So let's look at Arissa first. This is the unit that we all get. Uh, she's actually going to be a dead eye class. So this is a different type of unit. She's an archer though. And remember, archers don't work very well in auto mode because archer's skills need to be used at the correct time so you can actually hit the enemy. In auto, their skills miss a lot of the time. All right, but either way, her skill is going to be forest arrow, loses several air bodies of fey arrows before her, restoring the HP of all allies and inflicting wind damage on hit foes each time. Damage increases with higher combos. So the higher my combo, meaning the levitate mechanic, is going to play a major part in this. The higher my combo, the more damage is going to be able to do. So right there, her skill is actually going to be feeding off of the levitate mechanic. Then her leader skill is Elven Bow. A 20 combo is performed, you get a plus 4% attack buff for the party with a maximum of 40% if you get a 200 hit combo, essentially. So, that's interesting because that's going to be based off of combos, and it's something that I could think about using as a leader skill, to be quite honest, because with the levitate mechanic that I'm going to be getting from Furia, I know that I'm going to be able to actually raise my combo quite a bit. So that's something I could think about using because that could actually make it to where I don't have to use a full wind squad anymore if I use Orisa as my leader because it's not specific to the wind element. So the leader skill is really going to dictate which elements you want to have active in your main slots in your party, guys. That's the main thing that I want you to pick up from that. Now, the one thing I could do a lot better with my team right now is I could have these units slotted in to where once I unlock the rest of their abilities, their abilities affect the units that I want them to actually affect. That's when you get to the next level of team building. Once you unlock all those ability slots and you see how they all affect where people are slotted in on the team, then you can kind of configure your team and figure out who's truly going to be your leader, who's going to be your number three slot, who's going to be your number two hole, all right? But let's look at the rest of these four star wind units so we can see if that's really the team that I want to go with. Or can I replace Leon with somebody that's actually going to work better with the float mechanic? Let's look at Nimbus. 
unsheaths claws and lunges at the closest target, inflicting wind damage on nearby foes, increases power flip damage. So, here I can make another decision. Do I actually want to go with Orisa and play off of the float mechanic and invest into that? Or do I want to go ahead and slot in Nimbus along with Leon and then I have two units playing off of the power flip mechanic, right? You see where the team building is starting to take place. His leader skill is going to be plus 15% attack buff for the entire party regardless of element and plus 15% power flip damage. So again, if I use Leon, then I would be getting a bigger buff for both of those categories. Leon gives you the same buffs for both categories, but Leon's is literally double. And Nimbus would actually be playing off of the increased power flip damage that I get from Leon as my leader, guys. So this is actually where I can show you guys a pretty viable squad and a squad that can actually carry you quite a bit of ways. So I can have Leon play my leader because again if we look at his leader skill plus 30 percent attack buff for win units plus 30 percent power flip damage and i would have two units in my squad that play off a of power flip one being nimbus and he's going to be taking the spot of Arissa. and then i don't want nimbus in my number three slot because remember one of leon's abilities is going to protect the slot the unit in number three right so I would actually put Nimbus in my number two slot and then I would put Furia in my number three slot. And what that gives me is that now gives me a warrior who's going to be protecting my healer and units that both get power flip damage buffs. That's going to make my power flip incredibly powerful, guys. All right. So that's how you build a power flip team. If you want to build another specific type of team, a penetration team, you would look for units that are going to play off of the penetration mechanic, that are going to receive buffs off of the penetration mechanic. You want to make sure that you have a healer. You want to make sure that you have someone that can deal good damage. You want to make sure you have someone that can actually shield your team when needed. These three units right here, even though these aren't the best three units of my account, this is probably one of the best teams that I can formulate with this particular account right now because of the way the abilities all synergize off of each other guys all right and even if i take a look at this last unit here of mia flings three rounds of knives in every direction inflicting wind damage on hit foes plus three percent boost to mana gain plus 12 percent attack buff for wind units plus hp percent so this particular unit that's not someone that will be used in a regular squad this will be someone that's used in the mana farming dungeons right That'd be your mana farming squad. So you can receive more rewards off of farming your mana dungeon. So not every unit is actually built for becoming part of your main team to actually fight enemies in the PvE modes or co-op battles or whatever it may be, right? Now, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about, since we kind of talked about how to decide who to be in your main squad, how do you decide who to put in your sub squad? Well, the most important thing to know about your subunits is the main thing that you get from them is the ability to use their skill when you trigger the skill of your other units. Now, you can get a little bit deeper and, you know, unlock different chain skills if you have, like, the perfect formation. And once we get there, I'll drop a video specific to that. But for right now, we're just going to talk about just putting together a great team to start leveling and investing in, right? The way you decide who to have in your sub slots is you want to figure out which units are going to complement your other unit skills the best. So I have Furia in one of my slots, right? Her skill is a healing skill. So because her skill is a healing skill, then I will want somebody that's bagging her up that's going to allow me to do some damage even while I trigger her skill. And even someone like Orisa, if I was to use her as the backup unit, not only am I going to be able to do damage, but it's giving me more HP recovery. So I can double up on the HP recovery and allow Furia to actually do damage with that skill. Then someone like Leon, his skill is actually going to be a skill that shoots out a tornado and goes straight forward. If I want to round him out better, then I can use someone that's going to give him that penetration. And I can actually use someone like Veron for Leon's backup, right? 
Now I'm starting to formulate a very deadly team that has different mechanics covered. I have penetration. I have the float mechanic with Furia. It's using it on the correct units with the wind units. Furia's abilities are still going to be buffing the rest of my squad because they're all wind units. My number one slot hero in Leon is going to be protecting my three slot hero and my healer, keeping my healer alive, which means my healer can keep the rest of my team alive longer. And then I have Nimbus in the middle playing off of the power flip that we're going to be getting from the leader skill from Leon. So you kind of see how the, how the team building is going, right? All right, man. Hopefully that video helped you guys really think through how to actually team build on World Flipper. Yes, you can use the link that I'm going to pin in the description and in the pinned comment to actually look at some teams that have already been tested, some tried and proven teams from some of the veteran players across other servers. But I want you guys to understand like the thought process. So that's what this video was about. It was not about showing you meta teams, so don't get it twisted, guys. But either way, appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, this is Wolfpack, and we out.